Welcome back everybody, and it is time to start talking about a specific machine learning algorithm. Yeah, the moment we've all been waiting for. We are going to define the ID3 algorithm. By the way, I think algorithm is one of the hardest words to spell for some reason. <laughs> I always look at them like, is that spelled right? And unfortunately, I know, I'm sorry, we're actually not going to go on the computer and program the ID3 algorithm right now. We are going to be using pseudocode, which means I'm going to make it up as I go. <laughs> but the goal is to understand how the ID3 algorithm works. That way, when you need to use it in the future, it's much easier to pick up. And if we get to it in future videos, we already have this as the foundational knowledge. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the ID3 algorithm on the chalkboard. Sorry if I'm disappointing, but it's what I got for today. Maybe later, maybe later we'll get into programming it. Okay, so I'm gonna split this video into two sections. So we're gonna have a part one and a part two. The typical structure for recursion is you have the base cases and then you have the recursive call. And you can have some other processing in the middle here if you want, but these are the two pieces that we're going to discuss. So. It's kind of interesting how I'm going to go about doing this because I'm going to talk about the second half first. That's because the base cases are when to stop and I want to focus on how we start. So the base cases aren't going to be true until after we've hit a couple recursive calls. So I'm actually going to go through this algorithm as if we were processing it where you're going to hit the recursive calls first because the base cases aren't going to be true. So hopefully that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, it doesn't really matter to be honest. <laughs> Let's just start with the recursive call. So before the recursive call, there is going to be some extra stuff. And this is what's going to do the actual processing. Um, in the recursive intro video, this would have been the call to announce a message with a particular volume. So you can think of a recursive function as having three pieces, the base cases, the actually doing stuff part, and then the recursive call. The very first thing that the ID3 algorithm is going to do is choose the descriptive feature with the most discriminatory power. If you think back to when we were talking about decision trees, this example might be something like age. So we pick a feature such as age, and the one we pick is specifically the one with the most discriminatory power which this is, requires some prerequisite knowledge. So if you're just jumping in here, go check out my video on discriminatory power, which will teach you how an algorithm chooses the one with the most discriminatory power. And that is based on an entropy measurement, which is basically a fancy word for a number that represents a feature's discriminatory power. So this section is going to go through all of the features and whichever one has the most discriminatory power, it's going to pick. The next thing it's going to do is partition the data based on the feature of choice. What this means in the example of age, if we split less than 50 and greater than 50, is it's going to split our people into two groups, where the people who are less than 50 are on one end and the people who are greater than 50 are on the other end. The next thing is it's going to remove this descriptive feature from the descriptive feature list. So we have a list of all the descriptive features that we can choose from. We want to get rid of age. And that's because we don't want to split on age again <laughs> because we've already done that. If you did want to split on age again, such as less than 25 and greater than 25, well, you could just do it once and have multiple branches, 0 through 25, 26 through 50, 51 through however you want to split it, you can do that. It doesn't just have to be two partitions. The next thing is to issue the recursive call on each of the partitions. This is the part where the focal point is going to move down to a branch and, and do the same exact function. So it's going to choose the feature with the most discriminatory power. And remember, it can't choose age because that was removed from the list of features. So it's going to calculate all of the entropy for each of the descriptive features and then pick the one with the most discriminatory power. Once it does that, it'll split our data into two groups, into as many groups as there are 
descriptive feature values. So if it's weight, we could have underweight, average, and above average, for example. And because this is recursive, it's going to go down to the next branch and do the same thing. And it's going to do that until it hits a base case, which is what we're going to talk about next. So once we hit the base case and we split our data into diabetes and not diabetes, well then it's going to go up a step and now we're back into the previous function, which hasn't finished yet because you see here it says recursive call on each partition. So after it finishes this partition, it's going to go down to this partition and do the same thing. And then it'll go up to this one again and down to this one. Once we go through all of those branches, this one's done and we're gonna go to this one because <laughs> this one here also did it for all of its branches. So it did this branch first. Once it finished with that branch, it went down to this branch, however big it may be. So that's the magic of recursion. It can kind of just go like a virus across the entire tree, issuing the same function on each of the nodes. The tricky part for this function is actually the base cases. So that's what we're going to dedicate an entire video to. So please be sure to check that out. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate it if you could subscribe to this channel as I'm really trying to grow this channel and that would just really help me out. So thank you and I will see you in the next one.